Welcome back to another video. Today is a follow-up video on the 2012 Mac Mini that I recently uploaded where I went through and upgraded it to its Mac specs. I added 16 gigabytes of RAM and two SSDs. Today we're going to dive in and do some benchmarks on the recently upgraded Mac Mini as well as add my Razer Core X eGPU that's running an AMD RX 580. We're going to see what kind of performance we can get out of it and then go over whether or not this is a usable machine eight years later. First I want to do some read write speed tests and kind of compare the old hard drive that came stock with this Mac Mini versus the SSDs that I installed. So what I did is I took uh, the old 500 gigabyte hard drive and I stuck it into this enclosure um, that I picked up on Amazon. I know it's not really going to be apples to apples because this is connected via USB instead of SATA, but it'll at least give us a roundabout ballpark figure. So let's launch Blackmagic. And first, I want to test the original hard drive that came with this Mac, which is the 500 gigabyte uh, standard hard drive. Run the speed test on it. And it looks like our results are about 106 megabytes write, 106 megabytes read. Keeping in mind these two scores, let's go ahead and test the one terabyte 860 Evo SSD that I have installed. Wow, just like that, four times better write speed. 486 megabits per second and an even more impressive read speed 519 ish megabits per second so we got a dramatic increase in performance switching out that old 500 gigabyte hard drive with a brand new 860 Evo SSD by Samsung now before I go and install my eGPU, I want to test the benchmark performance without the eGPU and then we'll plug it in and we'll install the eGPU and test performance with that added. I'm going to start off the benchmark tests by running Geekbench 5. We'll start off with the CPU test and then we'll switch over to the compute test now obviously we all know the weak point of this computer, the weakest point of this computer is the old dual core i5, it's a third generation mobile i5. We're not going to get very good performance out of that and there's no real way, there is no way to upgrade that, it's soldered on. We ended up with a Geekbench 5 CPU score of 554 on the single core score and 1298 on the multi core score. Again, nothing special there. Now we're going to run the compute test using our stock HD Graphics 4000, which, as y'all know, nothing special there. As you see, we got a pretty embarrassing score of 930 on compute out of the Intel HD 4000 graphics. Now we'll run the Unigen Heaven benchmark. And again, I'm running these before I install the eGPU so that we can get an idea of how much of a performance increase 
we get once the Razer Core X with the RX 580 is installed. To begin the installation of our eGPU, we're going to need to go to Google and type in Purge Wrangler Big Sur, even though this is a Catalina machine, uh, the website that addresses Big Sur also gives the instructions for Catalina and I just know that Googling Purge Wrangler Big Sur will get us to the right spot. So we click on that first thing that pops up and hit the beginner's guide. I already have my eGPU set up, so we're going to start at step 2A, uh, which is disabling the system integrity. So we got to shut down the computer. Then power the computer back on holding down Command and R at the same time, which will boot us into recovery and allow us to open a terminal window to disable the system integrity. Once inside system recovery, go utilities, terminal, then we just need to type in this command, C-S-R-U-T-I-L, disable. And it says successfully disabled system integrity protection. And we need to restart the machine for the changes to take in effect. Once the computer boots back up, we can head back to our instructions to install purge the purge wrangler script they have it all provided here you just highlight it command c to copy open up then open up a terminal window which you'll find in the launch pad under other terminal simply have to push command v it paste the script Enter, it's going to ask you for your password. Before I enter my password, I'm just going to throw a disclaimer in here. Uh, doing this makes changes to your computer. Uh, if you're not comfortable making those changes, if you're not sure what will happen, uh, err on the side of caution. Uh, I've done this before, I know what I'm doing. Um, so it's not my fault if you break anything. It gives us a little menu. First thing we want to do is hit number one, which is set up eGPU. Plug in the eGPU. And to plug in the eGPU on older Macs, uh, we have two cables here. One is a USB-C to Thunderbolt 2, and uh, then Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 2, which allows you to install the actual eGPU hardware onto older Macs. Everywhere I've watched has said they have the best results when they use actual Apple branded cables. So I went and bought the Apple branded adapter and then cable here. If you know of cheaper cables that work, please let me know down in the description below so that I can pass that along so everyone's not paying the Apple uh, tax. I'm not going to plug the eGPU in before installation, so I can push escape. I do not want to enable TI-82. This computer is not compatible. Uh, I have an AMD RX 580, so I want to select one. I do not need to enable legacy support. Now it's going through and installing the script. 
once the script's installed, the computer will restart. And then we should be able to uh, plug the eGPU in. Now that we've restarted after the script's installed, we can plug our eGPU in, and in theory, it will begin to work. We take our cable, go to the back of the computer, or the eGPU, plug it into the USB-C port, then take our Thunderbolt 2, plug, and stick it inside the Thunderbolt 2 slot. If everything's done right, we will see a little thing that looks like a microprocessor up here at the top, and it'll show our eGPU. Our second monitor came on board, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this monitor over to the eGPU. Now that we have all of the monitors set up correctly, we can begin doing the benchmark tests again to see what our improvement will be now that the external GPU is installed. First thing, I wanted to explain why I have two monitors installed. Um, with personal experience and all the other YouTube videos I've watched dealing with external GPUs, uh, the performance ends up better uh, with two displays. Uh, if anyone wants to explain that to me, uh, please leave that in the comments uh, below. Start off by doing the uh, Geekbench 5. Uh, and see now uh, it recognizes, now the computer recognizes that there's an RX 580 and we can choose to use that to run our compute test on Geekbench 5. Now, as we can see, we got a tremendous improvement uh, on our OpenCL score uh, through Geekbench 5. So to compare side by side, I think the numbers speak for themselves eGPU adds a tremendous amount of graphical ability to these old Macs. So now, let's head over to uh, Unigen Heaven, see if we can get a decent improvement there. And I can already tell a huge, huge improvement, uh, much smoother frames. Wow, talk about an impressive improvement in performance. Uh, if you recall, we were 4.4 frames per second with the internal HD graphics. Uh, with the eGPU installed, we were able to increase that to an average of 55.8 frames per second and maxing out at uh, 97.3. Um, one thing to note, I ran both tests on uh, ultra settings and another thing that uh, I've always been impressed with by Mac minis and many Apple products in general, uh, the fact that it is so silent. Uh, the only noise that I am getting is, uh, is from the eGPU. The Mac mini and, uh, and its fan is just silent, uh, which is a pretty impressive thing. Uh, when you think about it. Now let's take a minute and go through our results to decide if the Mac Mini 2012 with an eGPU is actually a good deal. First, a quick breakdown of our benchmark scores. The eGPU allowed us huge graphic performance gains against the stock HD 4000 graphics. 
which gave us an amazing 4,616% increase in our Geekbench 5 score and an almost 1,200% increase in our average frames per second in Unigen Heaven. Looking at those scores, I would tend to think that adding an eGPU is probably worth it. But let's take a look at the cost of the eGPU. In order to get this set up, we would need to buy the Mac Mini for $228, then go out and get 16 gigabytes of RAM for another 55, pick up our two SSDs for about $136, then finally we'd have to buy our eGPU and RX 580 graphics card for another $500, which would bring us to a grand total of $919.95. And all of a sudden, it's not really sounding like a good deal anymore. Our main problem now is that we just went out and spent $1,000 on a Mac mini that has an eight year old dual core i5 processor that we can't change because it's soldered in. Enter the 2020 Mac Mini M1 which actually costs twenty dollars less than the Mac Mini setup I just built. And although the Mac Mini with an eGPU may have slight graphical advantages, the M1 Mac Mini is far superior in processor power. Plus there's the added benefits of the new Mac Mini M1 being totally optimized from the ground up by Apple. So, is the Mac Mini with an eGPU worth it? Simply, the answer is no. There's no way to improve the processor of our eight year old machine. So, save your money and your time and just go and pick up the new Mac Mini M1 if you need that kind of performance. Thanks a ton for watching, it really means a lot to me. To see more of my videos, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I'm gonna be posting new videos every Monday, so if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover, make sure that you leave it in the comments below. That's it for now, appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next video.